Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Corinne and I have a video for you today about home decor. My usual content is more fashion based, but I feel there is this obvious connection between home decor and clothing. Both are an extension of self and both, I believe, in, at least in my world, they're collected over a long period of time. That is what ends up like reflecting who you are and what you love. So um, the reason for making this video is that some pieces, just smaller home decor pieces, have come into my life. I've either found them at antique stores or I've been gifted them and I really want to incorporate them into my room and I want to look at them every day and I want to be excited by them. So I'm going to try to change the space a little bit and incorporate them and sort of make myself a new little world to exist in, to create in, and to live in. So without further ado, here is the video. So this is where we're starting off. Everything that you've seen behind me in other videos is probably going to be similar. So I, you know, for practicality's sake, I have to have, you know, things hung up, things on display, whatever, so I can see them so that I can grab them to wear in the mornings. So the jewelry wall behind me is going to stay. I do plan on taking down these small box shelves because they're nonsense and um, I don't need them. But I guess you have not seen the rest of my room. So I'm just going to take you on a quick gentle little tour of like the space as is so we can get a good look at the before and then we can move on to the rest of it. Okay, enjoy! So I just really quickly want to talk about some of the things that I've been thinking a lot about. And yeah, just go into the inspirations that I love, 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 and I can't stop thinking about. So <laughs> as per usual, here's the inspiration segment of the video. The first one and the most prominent one by far is Tony Duquette, the interior designer. He was huge in the Holly Regency era of decor. Hollywood Regency, if you don't know what that is, it's sort of a reinterpretation of Regency. It's more playful, it's more colorful. It's sort of like if you told a kid to draw a castle, it's it's probably what they would draw. It's just like like huge chandeliers and big red carpets and it's just uh, theatrical and extravagant. And in the case of Tony Duquette, he was actually a production designer, costume designer, as well as an interior designer, and also a jewelry maker. So he did so many things and I, I you know, gently aspire to to that range of art and, and sort of wealth of knowledge of all of those subjects. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. I think with Tony Duquette, he has a lot of incredible ideas. The things that stick out to me most are his chandeliers that he makes or his his framed mirrors. He uses a lot of um, pieces from nature to create his art. So there are antlers, like gilded antlers on walls. He uses abalone shells to create chandeliers. He makes art out of shells. So there's a lot of really interesting sort of like DIY elements into the, the rooms that he creates. Um, and I find that very interesting. But the philosophy that he follows that I am really attracted to, that I really love, and that I follow myself, is sort of the mixture of collected things. And so he would maybe go to a market in Venice and find some old architectural salvage pieces and use that on walls in some of his places. And then he would mix those with uh, paintings that he would find at thrift stores and put them in a nice frame and put them up. So it's sort of a balance of like really historical, beautiful, 
old antique pieces and newer things at the time that were worth pennies, right? So it's just, it's a balance of the new and the old and the expensive and the inexpensive. I do want to mention that there is some sort of cultural general thievery that seems to happen in a lot of his art. That's not the stuff that I love and I'm thinking about. Anyway, all I'm saying is that it's important to be critical of your heroes. It's important to take their work as it is and sort of separate the things that were maybe not okay from the things that are beautiful. So that's sort of my Tony Duquette spiel. The next source of inspiration is going to be this book. Um, let me grab it one second. It's this book called Veterans uh, Faces of World War II. Just a photo book. Um, the photographer is Sasha Maslov who does more documentary uh, photography work but basically these are photos of soldiers um, in their homes and it has little sort of written passages about each of the soldiers on one page and then it has their portrait on the other side. Very interesting book. I love these sort of photo books because I am more interested in the daily life of others and how they choose to adorn themselves in their spaces um, more so than like catalogs of interior decorating stuff or uh, fashion magazines. But there's this one photo in particular that I cannot get over. It's this one of this man sitting in his room. Um, it's probably his dining room, I believe, but he's just sat there with um, his gorgeous lamp and all of these beautiful circular frames behind him. This is the reason that I do have some circular frames up and that is entirely because of this photo because I think round frames are really beautiful and cute and I want more of them and I want more small ones. So that is what I'm hunting for at the moment. But those are my two primary sources for today. And then um, I also have been watching the Versailles TV show, if you have not seen it, it's a really good one. And as you know, Versailles set in Versailles. The grandness and the extravagance and the gildedness of furniture, like the candelabras, the silks, the walls, the everything. It's just beautiful and it's such eye candy. I uh, am obsessed. So I had to include that however briefly. Yeah, I, I guess those are my inspirations. I have my little list of things. So I guess I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I want to incorporate into the space. And then I'm just going to start moving things around and I'm going to film it, don't worry. So hopefully you can see how everything transforms. And I think, I think that's that. So uh, here we go. So I think what I might start with is moving the books from the windowsill to the where this lamp is on this desk. Because I want to put a plant on the windowsill and I have to put curtains up and I want to change that around to make it uh, just a little bit more of a, a scenic look. <laughs> and so I want to move all of the sort of utilitarian parts of this to the workspace. R.I.P. to our gal, by the way. Love her so much. I'm so sad she's gone. Okay, so this is where we're starting with this. This isn't how this is gonna look, but I just needed to clear the window space so that I can clean it. I'm also really quickly going to remove this dumb white shelf. So I am currently trying to thread this curtain onto this other curtain rod that I have and it's tedious so it's taking a while. 
I thought in the meantime, perhaps I would share with you a little information about these curtains. They, I believe, are from the 50s. Um, they're all of the colors that I love most in the world, which is like green, red, pink, uh, browns, golds. It's just truly delicious. And I am so pleased to have found them. Basically, I went to an antique center. They were in one of the booths. My dad actually found them and was like, oh, Corinne, these are cool. Do you like these? Because he knew I was looking for curtains for my room for fun stuff, but then also for the fact that it's getting very cold in New York and I need to keep the heat in and the cold out. I uh, decided to put up curtains and I didn't want just any old curtain. Not not interested in the, uh, the curtains of today. So these were a really awesome find. They were around $30 for the set, which I mean, maybe expensive in some places, but I got New York kind of price tags in my brain. So when I saw $30 for a set of really gorgeous uh, vintage curtains, I said, hell yeah. So that's my little story about these. I think they could be about an inch shorter, which perhaps someday I will do just so that they maybe hang a little nicer at the bottom. Am I gonna do that today? No. And do I care that much? No. That's my my little tidbit of information for you. And um, please enjoy the sight of me uh, looping the rest of this curtain onto this rod. All right, <laughs> did it, here we go. <laughs> okay, so the next order of business, I think, is to put my new shade on that lamp. I'm actually just gonna move this green one into the living room and I'm going to put my new gold one on this lamp. So let's see how that looks. I got a new harp for my lamp. I found an adjustable one because I'm not sure quite what length is best for it, but I feel like the nine inch length is going to work well. So let's try that. I think the shade looks really good with this lamp, don't you? Something about it. We're playing, so I'm just gonna arrange and rearrange for a little bit. You're welcome to watch. So, tried my new candelabra. I think in, there needs to be something shorter. So, I'm going to try a pirate. So I think what's distracting me from making decisions is these two pieces on the wall right here. They're really cool. They're sort of like a floral art made out of clay, I think. And there's some like pine needles or whatever. I found them on the street like years ago. I think I want to see this brick wall again. So I'm actually just going to take them off and maybe move them into storage. And then I'm going to plan the rest of that side. So this is what I've put up. I just used the screws that were already in the wall for this. So not sure about the placement, but I might just leave it and then take out the nails and stuff in this wall and uh, see how I kind of feel about it. So next, I think I'm going to turn my attention to this sector of the room. I already moved my books over but I'm gonna, you know, try to arrange this 
see what can happen here and maybe bring in my other pirate. So we'll see. So, hello. What I would like to say very quickly about these candlesticks is that these are the only two candles that I had for them, these little orange guys, in my house. And so I ideally want some like some fun tall tapers for them. I do think the orange looks good in it and it like goes with my room, obviously, but they hold more potential than two little tiny burnt down orange candlesticks so keep that in mind but i think this is how i'm going to keep this for now and then i'm going to move on to the dresser area with my gorgeous lamps um these guys might go over there depending on how that turns out so stay tuned but this is this is this for now also, if we move this up a little bit, you can see the white mirror that I've hung there for now. Also might move, but it's there for now. Teehee. Okay, so for this vicinity, I am just going to clear it uh, again temporarily just to like clean it. And then I am going to put everything back and maybe add some things if I uh, see fit. So here we go. Special note to this gorgeous ashtray that I use for all of my rings. Um, I just think it's these people. This looks really good bare, but I have too much stuff to leave any surface bare. So the jewelry has to go back on here. But can we just appreciate this uh, piece of furniture and how gorgeous she is? Anyway, I put my little candelabra candlestick dudes up there and i mean it looks cute so we shall see <laughs> i really selfishly just want to light them so i'm gonna do that look how beautiful Okay, so this is what I have. But yeah, like I was saying, the the thing with having stuff, like having clothes, needing spaces to function a certain way, is that they have to function that way. If they don't function that way, why have them? In a different world, this would be clear, and they would maybe only be like a picture frame. But because I need to see my jewelry and be able to wear it every day this is how it's gonna look but yeah i like i like my little candlesticks here i think for now this is like where i'll keep them i might move them back over there when i get like taller taper candles for them because i don't want the light shade situation to be a fire hazard but i like this for now i think the last thing is just to do this wall behind me. So now I'm just gonna take these boxes off and get rid of them. So this is less pretty and less interesting, but something I think I'm gonna try out. I have this hanger thing from forever ago. And basically it's for pants. These swivel out and you can, you know, logically you would unhook your pants that way, but it's honestly the least convenient thing that I've ever experienced and it's useless for pants. But I was thinking maybe I can put it on this wall right here and use it to hang all my ties and that way I can see them better and when I need to use them or, you know, try to find one, I can just like swivel these out potentially. So. I might just put another hole in the wall real quick, hang this up, put my ties on it, see if I like it. If not, I'm just gonna take it down. But I thought that this might be a good way to use this specific thing.
Okay, so uh, that's everything for this video. I think it's a good start and I'm really excited to have these pieces in my room. I feel like with time, it'll all kind of like settle in. I might move some more stuff around later. Yeah, I think, I think I'm done. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your favorite home decor thing was because I think there's a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, I hope, I hope this was a fun video for you to watch. Um, I know it's different than most of my content, but I just wanted to try something new and this is like a subject that I've been a little bit more interested in recently. And so, yeah, <laughs> this is it. So I guess happy holidays and happy new year and all of that. Okay, bye.